Bring me that thing. Yo, bring it here. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, nope. She don't even like the stock ones. <laughs> Howdy guys, Jeep and Jason here, and that's my helper Pinto the dog. You may remember us from such internet films as your soccer ball and you, how much soccer is too much soccer. Bye Pinto. Today, we are actually gonna be working on the bump stops on the Jeep. I'm gonna do a more detailed install on those. After further thought and the last video getting kind of long, I thought, you know what, let's do a really detailed one. So I'm gonna do the fronts in a minute because it's a little bit more involved. The backs are super easy, but first let me tell you a little bit about these things and then we'll get going back here. These are the Metal Cloak Duro Spring Microcellular Replacement Bumpers. Whew, that's a lot of syllables for basically foam bumpers. But after trying them, darn it, they are effective. And offer amazing bang for your buck suspension improvements on your Jeep. Now what are you gonna do? It's way in there. That's what I thought. Oh, she's just gonna get it. Oh, now, don't mind all my stuff, Pinto. <laughs> I have one of my helpers here. He's hiding behind the camera right now. He's playing with Pinto, so that's why she all of a sudden is over there chasing the soccer ball. But to continue the theme from the first video where I showed you how I jack up the front of the Jeep and secure it, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rear of the Jeep. It's much easier. Just like the, everything on the install back here is much easier. So I go right to the center of the differential housing and just lift the Jeep. until I get it to a height that I like. I get under here, put my jack stands in place. Make sure they're at an equal height. And down you go. And then, as you guys saw in my first video, I always shake the Jeep to make sure that it's not going anywhere. If you can't shake your Jeep on your jack stand, you have no business being under there. So now let's pull a tire off and uh, I'll show you the bump stops in the rear. All right, so just so you guys know, full disclosure, I've actually been running these things and pulled this one out and put the stock one back in just to kind of show you the process and, you know, kind of give you a better idea of what you're looking at here comparison wise. Now, the fronts, you know, a whole different ballgame because they're inside the coils, but back here, you can see they're right here. To get them out, it's fairly straightforward. You just, I use some channel locks and you just twist and pull, and that sucker will come right out. Now that may fight you. Um, that's that's kind of one of those things that, who knows. But uh, that's the difference of what we're looking at here. And um, to put them back in, it's the opposite of that, obviously. You're not gonna use your channel locks and push that in. What I do is I use a little bit of something slick to lube it up a little bit that's not gonna stay in there forever. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the Lucas Slick Mist tire trim stuff. And let's see if these will actually just go in, especially I'm, I'm got a little bit of a head start because it's been in there, but just give that a push. And if you need to, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this little breaker bar. And, and the only thing that really keeps it in is these little tabs right here actually push in and just kind of grab the foam. But as you can see, that's in good enough. Next time that hits, that will actually do its job and be that much better. I mean, again, bang for the buck on this upgrade is massive because of the fact that it's $89 for four. And even if you have to pay a shop an hour's worth of labor to install these, it's still an incredibly good deal for how much impact or how overall the improvement of the feel of the Jeep on just regular driving and off-roading was. So this is a really highly recommended one. So that's why I wanted to bring you in and show you this. <laughs> Pinto's over there playing with the old bump stop and being cute as can be for old 
grumpy old dog. Sometimes she can be awfully cute. It's yours, Pinto. Now we'll throw this tire back on and we'll go through the front install. And I even have a, a little sh nitrogen shock charge treat for you guys in this video. <laughs> right? Get it. And then look what your old bump stops become. Dog toys. Bring it here. Come on. Good. One more time. You gonna catch it? You're gonna, you're gonna tug it. Okay, ready? Get it. Right? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. So cute. So much cuteness. All right, so shock charge 101. So I don't know if you guys remember, but I got the Power Tanks nitrogen charge kit uh, a while ago when I got these shocks, and it's been handy to be able to touch them up every six, eight months or so, all of the nitrogen shocks on the truck. It's just, it's one of those things that if you have to take it to a place, it's gonna cost you money. And when I did take it to my local shop, they didn't do it right. So um, it's nice to just have this tool. So you put your chuck on, I went ahead and pulled the caps off. I'm gonna just go ahead and screw this truck chuck on here. And this is just a good thing to do. You know, it's all depending on how you how hard you use your your junk and this got used up pretty hard this last trip so it's a good time to catch up on this type of maintenance so so now what i do is you have that attached you get your chuck on there and then i'll use this thing to tell me what the shock is and so there's i'm showing the shock is actually it's not that low um, that's about what the loss you get just from every time you plug this thing in. All right, so here's a cool little trick I discovered that you can do for, if you're gonna do a bunch of shocks at one time, this needle valve is nice to just fill uh, and get a really precise reading, but what I found is that if you open the needle valve up and just use that as kind of an open and close valve, we can adjust this thing to 150. So you can see I have that just about on 150. Now what I can do is I go ahead and shut the valve. Now that I have that set there and watch this cool little trick. So then I just shut this, the needle valve here, and I could disconnect from the shock, disconnect my valve here, go right up to the top shock, connect the the chuckless or the lossless chuck, they call it here. Get this tight. It doesn't have to be super tight. So get that tight. Reattach this thing. Haven't touched anything yet on the adjustments. Dial in, open the chuck. So now it's pressing down the valve and you can see that it's uh, showing the, the value there. And now I should just be able to open this needle valve and it'll go to the exact pressure that we had here because we haven't changed anything on this regulator. So I'll just give that a second or two to equalize. And that's it. We've now just topped off and made sure the nitrogen is good in this shock. Now I can just close the chuck. Now that we have the upper and lower dialed, I can close my needle valve and we're good to go. That shock is good. You could do that now times four. Now remember, you must droop your shock out to do that. So you can't do that on a shock that's uh, at ride height. So this is just something uh, that you have to do with the front end drooped out. All right, let's move along. Bring it here. <laughs> I love how she's like ignores us. Come here, bring it here. Yeah. That's good. Good, go get it. Ready? Ready? Go get it. Well, I went ahead and thought I might as well show you guys how to install or replace the bump stops while I'm here. So let's do that. It's uh, it's it's not a hard job. It's just a pain in the neck because to do it easier, I actually like to replace, remove this spring right here. And to do that, you have to remove the lower bump stop spacers and I use a spring compressor because you could disconnect the shock, disconnect the tie rod and get the whole thing to droop far enough for the springs to just fall out. But I have these spring compressors, so I'll just do that. So 
let's do that. Let me show you. We'll do it. We'll replace this and we'll just consider it done. Unscrew in the mounting bolt out of the middle there, piece of cake. And then this, this is a really ingenious way to do the bump stop extenders is to just have these little hockey pucks so you can adjust them, fine tune them to as your suspension changes. Like I've been tempting, I've been wanting to add one more because the 38s find this inner fender, but it just rides so good right now um, with just letting it, let, letting the tire rub a little bit. It's not too bad. And especially after that huge impact to have see, you know, the, the tire only really rubs inside here under extreme turning while I'm wheeling and during flex. So I'm gonna leave it for now until we'll see, you know, it, like I say, I've been pretty happy with it. So now as you can see, the spring is still kind of tight with it right here. I could drop this, uh, disconnect the shocks and droop it a little bit more, but you know, it's only gonna take another, it's about six of, the, six of these, half a dozen of the other to just use spring compressors. These are uh, Harbor Freight specials, so don't have high expectations, but I've actually got quite a bit of usage out of these. So knock on wood, they've been actually fairly safe-ish feeling. And you're gonna wanna be tempted to use an impact on these things. And I've gotten away with it lots of times, but it's just a thousand times safer to use a manual drive socket on these. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. All right. And <laughs> this bump stop is actually ke keeping it from coming out, but there we go. We can lay that down, keep that out of the way. Remember that wants you dead, so be respectful. And this now just pulls out. Here's a comparison to the stock bumpers. There's a fairly dramatic difference in size and compound that directly translates into a much more comfortable ride. So what I want to do to get this thing back in place inside here is I'm just going to clean this out a little bit, swipe this down, make sure that your spring insulator is still up in there. And so I'm just using some of the Lucas Oil Slick Mist because it's something that I could spray on to give it a little bit of lube, but it's not going to be invasive. It's not going to do anything in the long term. So then you just put that in there and then get that in its new home piece of cake, right? So now I'm gonna do a little bit of OCD just to clean up a little bit of this stuff that I can reach. Get a little bit of my toolbox buddy in here, making sure not to get it on my brakes. Boy, the axles, my chromoly axles here really took a beating from all this uh, salt water on this trip. So just get a little liberal amount of uh, toolbox buddy in through here. Make it look pretty again. All right. Now we can get the sway bar out of our way. Working smarter, not harder. And up we go with our spring making sure to get it clocked right. Now, you can just go down. Get that one off. Right, now we're gonna put our bump stop extenders back in and that's just a matter of throwing these in. And then the bolt and the washer on the top one. Throw that bolt on down. Let's get that tightened up. And these don't go that tight. These just, you just gotta keep these snug in here with this, with this one. 
that's it. I think we should wipe down the rest of the spring with the toolbox, buddy. And And that's it. All right, so it's pouring rain here in Southern California, but I wanted to kind of show uh, what it's like to hit a bump with these things. I got some GoPros out there, so we'll go hit some curbs and see if we can. I can give you an example of how uh, much more absorbing, uh, shock absorbing these these bump stops are. They're, they really do make a difference. Ready to go, Pinto? We're not gonna let a little bit of rain stop us. Hopefully the GoPros are waterproof. I have a tendency to drown my GoPros. I think I got waterproof housings on them. We'll find out. Ah, there is a little curb up here. Let's hit that. I tell you right away, you can feel a difference. Um, I mean, I'm hitting the bump stops. You definitely feel that you're hitting them, but there is so much more compliance there. Pinto doesn't like this test. We probably should have left Pinto at home. Are you okay, girl? Well, there you go. A really, really impactful $89, really good bang for your buck upgrade for your Jeep JK. I actually, they make these for the JL as well. So there you go. There's the proof right there uh doing a little bit of mall crawling out here in the street but there you go a fairly easy install and a really really good bang for your buck upgrade for your jeep until next time enjoy your drive remember your next adventure begins with you